Okay, so now we've gone to the part of the calibration where we actually need to start uh, using an oscilloscope um, and a frequency counter and all the other gizmos. So here I have uh, basically this is the uh, remote display uh, of my PC, uh, my, 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 my little Ultrabook, which is running uh, the USB scope that I've got. And uh, that thing's given me nothing but trouble in the last couple of months. It's gotten all fuzzy and noisy and other problems, and I've had to keep taking it apart and putting it back on my bench and actually reflowing the motherboard on it because I think it's got some sort of tin whisker problem. Uh, long story. Anyway, I've, I cooked it this morning, so it's behaving itself today. And uh, while I do have a nice scope replacement coming, which I'll show off in a future video when it arrives, uh, this is my scope solution for now. But in the meantime, I've also got this iPad down here. Oh, and this is a RAM mount. Uh, and this is actually a custom Visa mount that I put together using some pipe clamps and some other stuff. This is all on just basically a microphone stand. Uh, not a microphone, a uh, speaker stand, a small speaker stand holding all these guys up, just, just so you know. Uh, long and the short of it is... Here is an iPad. This iPad is going to stand in and we're going to compare its scope results and its frequency counter results with the uh, official USB scope. Uh, and of course we're going to use my Syntegrator calibrator box in order to get it going. So uh, first thing I've got to do is take these guys here and plug them in. So it's really simple. Um, basically these six go into this header here, uh, which is a test point header, points eight. 13 I believe and then over here is points 14 to 19 which is the second header block like so and then uh, of course it's no good without a ground so I'm going to put the, the little gri gripper here into the analog ground loop like so and uh, I'm switching it all the way back to voice one select and now Really all I got to do at this point is take this long lead, which I, I made it specifically long so that I could you know, have the iPad off at a distance, and I just got to plug in to the microphone. So let me just find that. I'm looking for it specifically. Okay, there we are. All right, so now that should be good to go. So uh, VCA offset is the name of the game. So we uh, make sure we are in test program number one. And I am in test program number one. And we are looking for minimum thumps. That's what this is called, minimum thumps. So I am, let me make sure that I actually have loaded test program number one properly. Okay. All right. I am not seeing anything showing up ah, because I didn't connect the uh, the scope leads, of course. Stupid man! You stupid, stupid man! Ah! Oh, ignorant fool! All right. There are times where I'm a real blockhead. No one is immune. Okay, so uh, let's do that. Um, this guy here goes to the ground, this guy here goes to the currently selected test point as selected by the switch, and now I should be able to see thumps. And I'll tell you what, I've always found, I use an analog scope as well, and I've always found that it's better at detecting thumps than anything else. Um, now, what I got to do on the analog scope, I'll just show you, is I've got to like turn the time division way up, way down, so it even starts to flicker, and then I got to crank up the the vertical. There we go. Now you can see. Now you can see those thumps. Let me zoom in so you can see those thumps. You see those thumps? We want to minimize those thumps. Now, having done all that, we need to have a look over at these guys and try to get to the reasons why we're not seeing them here. And uh, let me just start with this scope, the digital scope. Um, actually, 
Uh, did you see that? It sort of jumped up a little bit. So realistically, let me just let's go over to the the actual display on the notebook because I'm going to have to go and interact with the notebook display in order to get it to behave itself. Too many pieces of gear. Okay, I'm going to be adjusting the time division. Take it way down. And I'm increasing the sensitivity. There we are. Wait a second. I want to reduce the sensitive element. Okay, I'm seeing the thumps there. And Okay, I guess that's the best I'm going to do. It basically, now I can trap some of those thumps. So, there they are. Thump. Okay. So now I'm seeing those thumps. Now, let's have a look and see if we can make this go on the iPad. All right. If we can make this happen on the iPad, that'll be really, really cool, especially for a lot of people who, you know, don't, can't afford a scope or don't have a scope or whatever. So the program that I am running is called eScope 3-in-1. See, there it is. And uh, what am I seeing here? Not a whole lot. And... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing my thumps at all. Okay, so it's a bit of a bust here on the... Um, on the iPad. But definitely... Hang on a second while I just switch over to something else. I'm going to change it to program number three. See, program number three generates a sine wave. So, we can definitely see that the scope does work. Of course, mind you, it's uh, there. I said it's a triggered operation. So we can definitely see that the scope works on the iPad. So it's good for a number of things. But what it's not good for is thump detection, unfortunately. So once again, we're stuck. Until I can figure out something else, let's go back to program number one. And there are our thumps. Basically, it is VR30 for voice number one. It's basically just underneath like this. And then next to it is VR25. And then that's one, two, VR30. And the inside, VR25. That's it, VR30, VR25, uh, VR20, and uh, VR15. Yeah, so uh, you can think of it as here's your, here's your DCO chip and then these two guys sort of uh, balance them out just underneath so okay back to the thump analysis all right so now we are working with num voice number one and I'm going to be adjusting that trimmer I'll show you the, the display there nice and big So I'm going to over here to VR3, I apologize for getting into the shot like that. And so I'm just going to adjust this down. Ooh, big one. I gotta be honest, I'm looking at the analog scope right now because it gives me the far better 
real time feedback here. Okay, I am now doing it and seeing very little because, again, in my worldview, the analog scope, while it, you know, and I, <laughs> I've been on geek blogs, right, where someone says, oh, I just bought an old uh, Tektronix da 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 from the 80s. It's my first scope. I'm really, really happy. And then some jaded old nerd says, oh, yeah, well, if it's your first time with a 50-year-old truck stop prostitute, da 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 stuff, stuff like that. Horribly sexist, nasty stuff. And the point is, is that, first of all, we don't do that kind of game here on the Syndicator channel. But secondly, um, an older scope like this has advantages. It may be old, it may be limited by today's standards, but, I mean, for the thump detection, it actually does a much better job. Now, uh, I'm going to switch over to voice number two, and uh, this is the advantage here of my methodology is that I have my disintegrator calibrator box, so I don't actually have to do anything other than go select voice number two, and I'm ready to do the thumbs on voice number two. There's no mucking around. So here I am, and as you can see, voice number two is exhibiting more thumps. So I'm going to keep it on the analog scope, so you can see this this old classic, <laughs> in many ways it's the same vintage as the Juno 106, and in many ways, it has advantages being analog that the digital ones don't have. So um, I invested a hundred bucks in this. There's a guy locally who's like kind of like the disintegrator of oscilloscopes, and he has all of this workshop full of old scopes, and he's fixing them up, <clears throat> calibrating them, and, and then selling them locally. So I got lucky on this one. This is a Hameg. It's actually quite nice, and uh, I've got to be honest with you. No matter what kind of fancy digital scope I get, I'm not going to want to um, to replace it. Now, let me just get this cable out of the way. This is just a, a probe for the frequency counter, which we're not using this time around. Okay, so there we are. And I'm going to adjust the thumps on this guy, which is VR25. This is voice number two. So, as you can see, the thumps are positive, and I'm just making them worse right now. And I'm going to bring them down... There. Isn't that nice? That's very nice. Okay, on to voice number three. I love that disintegrator calibrator box. Okay. VR30. Okay, great. Voice number four. Click. Voice number four is looking actually pretty good. That's VR15. Can't leave well enough alone, though. Always figure I can do one better. Good. Voice number five. Click. Voice number five. VR14. No, no, no. Voice number five is VR10. Do not, do not make the mistake of changing the wrong trimmer. That looks beautiful. And voice, click, voice number six. Oh, I'm loving this. Not having to go and repatch probes every time. It's beautiful. Okay. All right. So the analog scope wins this contest between the digital and the iPad.